Hello all, Rick here with a cultural index from one of Star Trek's most explored species, the Bajorans. Of course you can't talk about the Bajorans without mentioning their primary faith, that of the prophets of the Celestial Temple. Not only is this religion a guiding aspect in most areas of their life, but the wormhole aliens that they worship do have a long if mysterious past with the planet and its populace. However, I won't be examining this in depth in this video, as I have already done a great deal of exploration into it a while ago, which I'll link. So, looking into the Bajorans, let's get started with their homeworld, Bajor. It's the 11th planet of the Bajor system on the far galactic east side of Federation space, near the Cardassian border and Badlands territory. It is an M-class world of diverse climates, although as of 2375 it is still recovering from industrial damage to its structures and agriculture, caused by decades of oppression. It rotates on a 26 hour day and has five moons, Derna, Gerardo, Endala, Penrado and Barado. The system's main star is called the Havael. The Bajoran culture is a rather slow-moving one, but one that has been around for thousands of years and was an interstellar power much earlier than humanity, but after the Vulcans, more on that in a minute. Archaeologists on Bajor have unearthed evidence of their precursors building civilizations up to 500,000 years ago, and the Bajorans have a coherent record dating back to 28,000 BC. Around 10,000 years ago, the first tier of the Prophets, what would become known as the Orbs of Bajor, was found, leading to the eventual uncovering of nine in total. Through these, a viewer could experience a trance-like state of visions from their past and future. The most powerful of these were penned into the first prophecies and attributed to their gods who resided in the Celestial Temple. This temple referred to the Bajoran Wormhole, whose inhabitants were the Prophets, or wormhole aliens. The Bajorans achieved interstellar flight around the 16th century by constructing lightships, whose solar sails would catch the particle winds from their sun and be propelled through space. Such locomotion was surprisingly speedy but well below warp travel. However, if the correct circumstances were met, the vessel could be accelerated to warp speeds. Such an incident did occur in this era which catapulted a Bajoran vessel to Cardassia Prime, and resulted in a first contact that the Cardassians would deny for generations. Bajor soon developed a reputation for being a world of culture and learning, even before it was warp capable. It is unclear when they developed warp drive, and an old reference puts it at around the early 24th century which would place them right before the Cardassian occupation. That sounds a little late to me, but they were still using their lightships to sail to other systems at warp speeds by the 22nd century, so maybe they saw no need for a warp drive when their lightships worked just fine. There are mentions, however, that Bajorans began to establish their own colonies in other systems, which they could have done either via their lightships or by travelling with other species that reputedly frequented Bajor. It was one of these colonies, Pilagra, that was encountered by the Federation in 2270, making for official first contact. Although with the reputation Bajor had by this time among other species, it is probable the UFP already knew of them. They continued to peacefully traverse the stars and explore until the early 24th century, which was not a good time for them. It is around 2319 that the Cardassian Union, committed to its expansionist ideals, led it to invade the mostly peaceful and technologically inferior Bajor seeing it as a resource too rich a prize to ignore. The Cardassian occupation would rend the world and cripple the Bajorans for 50 years, as the Cardassians perverted the course of their culture and exported Bajor's resources to its own territories to fuel expansion. Despite the Cardassians coming into conflict with the Federation, the UFP would not render direct aid to Bajor until they had managed to shake off the Cardassian oppression themselves in 2369. 
When this occurred, Bajor reached out immediately to the UFP for aid in rebuilding, despite many in the government that refuted the idea of any more alien assistance. Understandably. Bajor soon made the declaration that it wished to join the UFP, and so from 2369 to 2375 the planet was helped back to its feet and prepped for membership. Whether it finally joined or not is not yet confirmed in canon, but it's probable. Some stories claim it happened in 2376, others in 2393, but whatever the case, Bajor is probably going to take whatever action ensures it can retain its own sovereignty something that the Federation places among its highest principles. The government of Bajor is one that underwent a drastic transformation due to the occupation, but has witnessed several different governing styles and bodies over its long history, as any culture would. The current Bajoran Republic, for example, is the third planetary republic, which consists of a provisional government installed after the occupational government was dissolved in 2369. This unified body is made up of the leaders of its various nation-states, such as the Paku and Navot, arranged into a council board of ministers. These all reported to the first minister of Bajor. There were other political parties, but these were not representatives of the planet as a whole, merely ideologically different structures like the Kon Ma. There were also occasional xenophobic elements, such as the benign-sounding Alliance for Global Unity which resorted to extremism. Although separate, the spiritual religion of Bajor is just as powerful in steering the direction of the populace as they always had a table in meetings alongside the Council of Ministers. The Kai was the spiritual leader of the primary faith, and a member of the clergy chosen from the Vedics. The Kai themselves was to seek guidance from the prophets in all matters and manage the various assemblies of the faith. Their recommendations carried substantial weight, and it was regarded as the most powerful position on the planet, eclipsed only by the prophesied emissary of the prophets, who was eventually revealed to be Starfleet officer Captain Benjamin Sisko. As a Starfleet officer, however, and a downright decent man, he seldom exercised his influence, only involving himself in ceremonial matters where possible. Because of the prevalence of the Bajoran faith, there are many holidays and celebrations throughout Bajoran territories. These include the Days of Atonement, the newer Hamara, which celebrated the reveal of the Emissary, the Time of Cleansing, which was a fast, and the Gratitude Festival Peldor. During this festival, people wrote their issues and fears on renewal scrolls, before burning them along with Batarat leaf incense in fires. Bajor is also known for its food and artistic culture. Bajoran music, design, textiles, alcohols and more were frequently the subject of trade. However, this, like much of their culture, has been marred by the occupation, as their world was plundered of its artefacts and cultural exports by the Cardassians. There remain many items still in circulation or in private collections that are the results of Cardassian appropriation. Generally, reacquiring these is seen as part of Bajor's rebuilding. Because of this biodiverse climate, there are a myriad of fruits, vegetables and fauna across Bajor that contribute to a vibrant array of foodstuffs. Much Bajoran cuisine was sourced from plants, such as alvas berries, catapod beans, deca tea leaves and most of the kava plant, and moba fruits, these are just some of the native Bajoran plant life while pulaku, a large arachnid, shrimps and other animals were often prepared too. Hasperat was a spicy wrap, basically a local burrito, eaten warm or cold, and because of its easy to consume nature, it was often a favourite for those on a schedule, like Bajoro militia or Starfleet personnel. In terms of confectionery, we have the popular Jumja stick, which was a rich sap from the Jumja tree solidified into a sweet edible resin. On a, on a stick. Interestingly, but perhaps not unexpectedly, they have also adopted a few Cardassian refreshments, such as groat, canar, and larish pie. Bajoran script has a long origin across the planet and has a huge amount of variation. There is a standardised alphabet called Modern Bajoran that is a series of glyphs. 
Presumably each glyph represents an entire word, not just a letter. Because of this, it could be read both vertically or horizontally, and had its roots in ancient Bajoran, which looked similar, but was different enough that a speaker of modern Bajoran wouldn't necessarily understand the root language. These older texts were written as ideograms, kind of like hieroglyphs that prioritised depicting a meaning over a literal word. This often made translating old texts an extensive and involved process open to much interpretation. Bajoran names consist of a first name, which is the family name, and a second name, which is the individual name. The Bajorans, despite having this old and peaceful soul to their society, have been tempered by the harshness of Cardassian oppression. Many survived the process through not only devotion to the prophets, but by acts of defiance and resistance. No point dancing around it, the Bajoran resistance engaged in terrorism and guerrilla warfare to spite the Cardassian forces. The resistance would go on to dissolve in 2369, when Cardassia withdrew and those who fought went on to find new work. The Bajoran militia was formed from the civilian populace. The only training they had were in the tactics they employed during the occupation, which made for a tenacious, if loose, military. With the militia becoming the primary defensive force of Bajor, soon institutions were formed to begin training recruits properly, from the experiences of those who survived the fights over the 50 years and Starfleet personnel. The Bajorans are a varied people themselves, as most species, but there are a few common traits such as the strong belief in the prophets, but honestly even this varies from person to person. Some are incredibly spiritual, some maintain a deep faith, and some observe the practices but have little use for them. Basically, they're as varied as humans, which makes for a deep and rich culture, oh, but an annoying species when you're trying to write a summary to a 10 minute long video. This aspect of them, their variety, is depicted in all levels of their culture, as they were tied heavily to the series of Deep Space Nine, appearing in every episode with a lot of development. We have multiple ruling systems throughout their history, like the Dajara castes and three republics, several languages, each with its own etymology, and a recorded 30,000 years of architecture, lost cities and religious observations. Bajor really is a planet steeped in culture, and realised on screen as such. Every planet in Star Trek, in theory, has the same history behind it, it's just Bajor had more than a 45 minute episode to convey its entire planetary history. Thanks for watching this video on the Bajorans, and as you can tell this video has barely scratched the surface of their culture. I might do some index addendums on them, focused on ancient Bajor or something, because there is tons to go on. Let me know if that would be something you'd like to see expanded upon. In the meantime, there are two more options for the index to address. The votes will be over on the community tab, and feel free to suggest more ideas in the comments below. The options this time are the robotic artificial intelligence of the Geth from Mass Effect, or the lack of intelligence from the pack led of Star Trek. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you for another video. I've been Rick, and goodbye.